Welcome to Think Alive. We're Sharon and Andy, just two people with a dream and a vision of restoring our traditional stone-built farmhouse in southern Spain, transforming it into a beautiful off-grid home and sharing our journey with you. Welcome back everyone. Um, Sharon's not with me today, she's got a load of errands to run, um, but she'll be back later. Um, our new gate and thing is working exceptionally well, um, so that's a result. Now we can carry on getting that sink, working on that sink in the in the old corral, building the um, unit for it basically. Alright, uh, so I've disconnected again the, um, the current temporary setup. So we get this out of the way and then go and cut the sinkhole that we marked out the other day in the new one. So if you saw the video, um, two videos ago I think it was, when we, we offered this up, we cut it all to the shape that we wanted, got it all fitted nicely, put it in place, offered the sink up to it upside down um, and I drew a line right around the outside of it. Measured the distance in that we need to put a new line on, 40 millimeters in from the back and front, and 25 millimeters in from the side. And if you didn't see the last one um, when we did that, that's what we did. So now I'm going to um, mark my lines, measure them in inside this, and um, get it cut out. So with my lines drawn, where they cross, I'm going to drill a hole through wide enough to take my jigsaw blade. I'm just going to clamp this to here so we don't get any movement. Then clamps again. Um, another bit of wood. I'm putting a bit of wood on it because sometimes um, the clamps can mark your surface if you haven't really tight. It's already starting to curl this, it does. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some strong struts across around the edge of the sink once I find out where I need them to go. So make sure we've, not got, we've got enough clearance between the edge of the fence, which we have, to cut down and um, get a drill. I'm going to do this side first and then turn it round, do the other side, make it easier for myself. Simply follow the line with the jigsaw. So with the front done, just spin it around. Repeat the process on the back side. Okay, with that one done, we'll just spin it around this way again, join the dots together. There we go. There 
how it is. Another, another potential cutting board. Uh, right, we'll go and offer this up now. Um, see how it lies. Before I go any further, <laughs> I've just dropped it over, just inverted the sink, dropped it over the way it's going to go, um, just to make sure that it fits all right and it fits the treat. stuff on the workshop so here. Yeah. We've got the gate on the courtyard to contend with. Then the new gate we just put in. Then Jesse's cat gate here. <laughs> so it's all very complicated. Right, smashing. Um, right, I'm going to have a way up now and see what we're going to do next. I am pretty, pretty happy with that so far. As you can see, the frame just completely needs remaking um, with the exception of probably the back piece and much of that side piece at the back but that's coming up um what i want to do now i want to draw get a line and get an angle on this and um, to get it parallel ish to that um so i've not got a pointy sticky out corner as we walk in just to taper it back and then probably go like that um and then as you can see it's too short so i'm going to attempt the piece that cut off to actually glue it. These, these are actually made from pine boards that are glued together. Um, so if they can glue them together like that, then I'm sure I can glue a little piece on the end here to make it longer. Um, that's a challenge. I have done it before with um, different results, but we're going to have a go. But first of all, yeah, I'm going to mark this and um, take it back to the workshop through all my gates and get it cut. So what I've done, I've just laid my spirit level on it, eyeballed it to this side. Um, it looks about right, nothing else is straight in this house so it won't really matter and I've, but I've marked it underneath but if you remember what I said the other day you want to cut from the underneath so you, your blade doesn't leave rip marks on your surface um, so I think I'm going to cut that one first it's a, it's a slow process uh, with a circular saw and then come back and um, look at how this angle is going to work and um, what I can do with that. But first thing I need to get rid of this because it's got to be gone anyway. So it's clamped back onto the bench. I've got my guide in place. Remember to allow me 37 millimeters from the edge of the plate to be blade. What we do now, just the same again. Just um, run him along. Obviously all these edges are going to be sanded and rounded and smoothed and blended. Right, I'll go and mark up the other angle now and then we'll get that cut. Right, so there it is. Um, it's alright actually. Um, it takes forever doing things like this. Whatever, if you sort of watch the build of the one upstairs, it's the same. Um, but unfortunately or fortunately you can't buy bespoke solid wood um, furniture in Ikea um, the walls aren't square you know it's just nothing is square about the whole building that angles pretty pretty crazy really on that corner and um, so we've got to make it but it looks so much nicer anyway um, so now I'm going to work out this one have a think have a play have a, have a visualization <laughs> and um, yeah, and then we'll, I'll go and get that cut. Right, so I'm not sure how mad I am, or if this is even going to work, but I'm pretty sure. Um, I'm going to take this piece off there, which leaves a nice clear way, because the door's there. When you come in, you don't want any bits getting in your way. And by doing that, I should be able to flip this piece over and stick it on the end here um, to make that extra bit up that I need. And it'll be the exact right angle, and it'll carry on down. And I can cut that back square, uh, if it doesn't make sense now, hopefully it will shortly. 
Um, so I'm back to the workshop again to get this one cut. The beauty of this is, each time you cut something off it, it gets a bit lighter. Right, that's worked out pretty well. Um, this little piece should sit in there. Got the exact same angle. Even the grain runs the same way. So I should be able to disguise that fairly and take us right up flush with the end of um, that. So I think the next thing I need to do is go and fix this bit, bit on there glue it because it'll take a while and then we can look at well yeah i'll just get this done first right so i'm going to get a bit creative here a lot creative um what i've done i've obviously clamped this to the bench what i want to do um i'm going to glue this to there i put some masking tape underneath so it doesn't stick to the thing then i'm going to glue him in i'm going to put a piece of masking tape over the top I'm going to put this on here, I'm going to clamp him on both sides to hold that joint flat and then using this massive ridiculous G clamp, I'm clamp him to my rail there, stick that piece of timber in there and hopefully I can wind it up tight to put a lot of pressure on it. So let's have a go, start with the glue. We're not set up for things like this, you know, ideally. <laughs> we'll have a go, we like to have a go, we like to try things and mess about. Right, let's get the glue on him first. We've got plenty on, we don't care if it comes out. It'll all be sanded off after. So he's on there. Well, look at that. Kind of liking this already. Put a masking tape over the top. Clamping them with a bit of wood should keep them both the same height and um, not stop it from moving when I wind up that big one because I'm not going to do them too tight. Just tight. Right, If anyone's got any better ideas, let me know. Although it'll probably be too late by then. Right then. I've got to try and hold him and tighten him up at the same time. Hopefully this is going to work. Come on, come on, don't let me down. <laughs> Keeps moving. There we go. need a piece of wood in there to stop that twisting see what I can find I'm not going long unfortunately <laughs> that seems to be doing it I'm going to crank him right up like I said these should stop it wanting to shift probably tighten that notch now get it on proper tighten some pressure on it right We'll leave it to dry and um, see what happens. In the meantime, I can pop this one back on, connect it back up, get it to resume his duties. And um, yeah, we're getting there. It's looking good, I think. Right, okay, I've left this drying overnight. Um, let's see what it's like. Um, I'm wearing black again. We get a lot of comments about this. Um, it's actually cooler to wear black if you're indoors out of the shade um, because for example the temperature in here is about 27 28 degrees in the workshop my body temperature is 36.8 or thereabouts so the black acts to pull the heat out of my body and into the air obviously if you're out in the full-on sunshine you want to wear white to reflect the heat back but as we spend the majority of time in that shade it makes sense to wear black as do the Bedouins in the desert, they are all dressed in black. Anyway, let's see what we've got here. I've not even looked at this yet, so I've got no idea myself. <coughs> Drop that. In. Fantastic. 
there we go. Take them off. I can reach it. Ah, no. <laughs> Too much of a stretch. Fab. Seems to have done the job. I'm picking it up by the bit of glue on. Excellent. Right out. Um, take that tape off as well. I think what we need to do now is put some braces across it and to keep it straight to take that little bow out of it and give it a massive sand down. Right, so it's back in place again. I've got the old one out. This one's back in once again, just so I can mark up um, the bits that I need to get rid of, so I can at least um, make a start on this, um, should I have to, while I'm waiting for the oil to dry on this, for example. So the next thing now, um, get it back to the workshop and um, start sanding, a marathon sanding mission. Right, so back in the workshop, it's clamped to the bench. Um, let's see what we can do with it. Well, absolutely beautiful work of art. Um, rounded all the corners off nicely. I've just got this end bit to do and the bit that I glued on. Um, Spin it around there to begin with. Yeah. Smashing. I think I'll do this edge first and then I'll work on the top. It's an awkward shape. <coughs> Fab. Right, I'm going to pop that down and carry on. things more pressing um, but it's Friday afternoon and I'm back on it and I'm gonna get at least that one finished that I started the other day so uh, I'll crack on so I need to say this joint here where I glued this piece on has given me the most grief and um, there was a little bit of an opening in it but I've just put a bit of wood filler in it and um, it was disappearing quite nicely so I'm gonna let the filler go off and um, Come back to it in a bit, but I think we can make it fairly disappear. The sounds back in position <laughs> of the ladder in the never ending line washing. Um, not many left to do though now. The one that she's on, and then what, one, two, three, four very short ones at the side of that. There's a light at the end of our tunnel, then the wall, of course. So while I'm waiting for that, I thought I'd have a look at this sink which I put back so normal service can be resumed. I take the two screws out of the front of this piece and when I put it together I glued it didn't I? <laughs> so um, I'm not messing with it now I need to wait till this is off again and I'll break these joints open and um, the one that this is glued to that runs along the wall needs cutting back a bit anyway so that'll be that problem solved and also this wall just at the end that needs a bit of lime wash as well where I couldn't get behind it when I first did it. Um, so we're just, yeah, I think we're going to have to wait till tomorrow. Well, that's that one done. I've literally now got just from there on this one and then one, two, three short ones. So <laughs> it will be done. Oh gosh, it feels like the fourth bridge or something. It's not. No, never ending, but um, not not much to go now. So happy days. I'm going to have a nice cold beer, and I'm going to go and sit with my Brucey for a bit because he's been confined to barracks. So uh, yeah, go and see if he's all right. Okay, so it's had a serious sanding down. Pretty pleased with that joint at the end there. Um, you can see it, but 
barely and when the cupboard's going to be in over this over those pipes anyway so all I'm going to do now is very dusty so I'm going to give it a wipe down with a damp cloth get all the dust off it then we need to let it dry and then um, we can get some oil on it Put a sheet on the table so I don't get oil on the table because it, it it's very sticky it's very difficult to get off but it's best if it doesn't get there in the first place right I'll get this done while I'm waiting um, we need to get this cleaned up I'm not sure exactly how we're going to do it yet but we need to get the plug all out first so come on I don't know how long it's been in <laughs> See what happens. We're going to take it up the side of the house just outside there. We're just waiting for the shade to come round a little bit because we don't want to go too far with it because it weighs, as you can imagine, an absolute ton. It's a bit minging. Ah. Okay, that's out. And that can just go in the bin. So it's dry, um, I'm literally just going to pour it on and spread it with a cloth. Ugh, I can get my gloves on. Um, before I forget today's top finger tip, don't leave cloth soaked in linseed oil indoors um, because they can spontaneously combust. It's not what you want when you finish with them that is. Um, nearly got my glove on. Right then, let's give it a whirl. First coat. There we go, look at that. Got some stray hairs already. <laughs> get it done there we go um, coat one done when you've finished if you've used the brush hold on to the brush take your glove off inside out put an elastic band around it and that'll keep your brush fresh another tip <laughs> we're, full, we're full of useless information um, fantastic right I'll just leave that to dry now and um, yes it's looking really nice though the nice thing about a, a rag as well you get a, a better finish on it and you know you can proper smooth it out I may even put a couple of coats on it and give it a really light sanding with some fine fine stuff you know like when you're applying layers of paint spray in a car and stuff we'll see how it goes though get me a rag outside anyway before it spontaneously combusts so this is the state of our sink um, it's got bits of I think it's sealer where it was obviously um, in the previous workshop all around here I think that will just come off with a scraper um, and it needs a good wash as you can see but the first thing I'm going to do is give it a good hoover because with seven cats in the house and they like to sleep in it it's filthy now got a bit of shade and uh, have a go clean it up see what we can do hopefully it'll all come off and it'll be like brand new so far so good stubborn bits of um, silicon just got this little plastic scraper for what they use for removing um, vinyl lettering off vehicles and things so that should do the trick without being too harsh I 
I'm back at the workshop. Um, the uh, first coat's dry. Second coat now. Um, this should use less oil. The first coat just soaks straight in, and um, yeah, it's really quickly absorbed. But the second coat will use less. Um, we'll need to leave this 24 hours probably to dry. So let's do it. So it's looking better already, um, had to upgrade my scraper to a metal one, um, got all the silicon stuff off here but couldn't, this grey I'm not sure what it is, whatever it's been fixed to the, um, the original worktop with, so it wasn't hacking it with the plastic one, I'm just going to give it a good go now with this and then turn it upside down, do the bottom. I hope Lillian and Chris aren't watching this because they'll want it back when they see how great it looks. <laughs> so with um, coat number two done, it's still soaking in remarkably quickly. What we want to do is just keep chucking it on until it stops soaking on and gives it a nice sheen on the surface, a nice finish. But yeah, now um, it's bringing out the grain. Lovely, absolutely beautiful. Um, so, yeah, we'll leave this a bit. We may be able to get another one on it today at this rate. Um, hard to say, so we'll see in a bit. And there it is, look at that, smashing. There's a little chink out of it there, probably angle grinder or something. We were going to try and sort of fill it in with something. We might do it at a later date. But you know what, it's old and it's going in an old house, so I don't care. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Happy days. Right, would you believe it, half an hour and that coat's just soaked in and it's bone dry as well. So I'm going to give it another one. Right, I think we're kind of getting a seal now. <laughs> this one's still soaked in in places. I'm just getting down there to get the light reflecting off it. But yeah, a lot of it's kind of sitting on the top now. So we'll see how this goes and maybe we'll be able to get another one on it later. Um, but we'll see. I might, it's Sunday tomorrow, but I might even put one on it tomorrow if it's dry enough. Obviously, the more we can get on it, the better. The more waterproof it's going to be, the less prone to being attacked by water and um, get that lovely sheen we're after. Well, guys, that brings us to the end of another exciting episode of Pink Alive. Time for a cold <laughs> beer. <laughs> Absolutely. We're back in the old corral because it's boiling hot out there, so definitely time for a nice cold beer. Um, yeah. We're getting there. Hopefully, in the next video or the one after that, um, this utility room will be near completion. Yeah, we've got everything we need to do. It's just a case of, oh, no, we need to go... We have to buy taps for the new yes. sink and um, hose. A couple and, of other bits. Yeah, a couple of other bits. So that'll be an outing well, one day next got week. A, we've got a mega deal on bulk charcoal. Yes. So and it's down in the same direction. So hopefully we're going to go down there next week, pick up a massive amount of cheap, high quality, proper restaurant charcoal for our smoker. Yes. And um, pick up. We'll pick up the, the bits for the time. sink at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely when a plan comes together. Anyway, so that's us for this week. Uh, we'll be back on Thursday. We will. We will. Thank you so much um, to everyone that supported the channel and um, all the, ch the channel YouTube member YouTube channel members. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, all the people that bought us a coffee and oh, of course all our Patreon supporters as well. Yeah. And the people, if you notice, there's a little button down there. If you want a super thanks button, if you want to buy us a beer via that. Thank you so much to all the people who have done. It's always much appreciated. We couldn't do it without you guys. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching. We'll um, see you Thursday.